my name is Sam Biddle and welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video we are using alcohol inks again and we're making these goldfish. I thought I would do two little fish in different uh, swimming directions. So the first thing you need to do is prepare your tips. And we're just doing two coats of white gel polish on a tip nail. But you can do this on a client too. Now, once you've cured it for 30 seconds, you add a background layer. Now I'm using pigment for this. You could use gel, but the pigment just gives me a little bit of a shimmer, which I like, and it peeks through the inks. I'm also not covering the whole nail because if I was to use this blue background and then put yellow over the top I end up with mud and we don't want muddy fish what we want is we want that yellow and the orange from the goldfish to really stand out so really I'm just going around the outside and creating a frame now these are pigments from be creative range and you can get these on sandbiddle.co.uk uh, we are using the pretty collection and the bright collection collection that dark blue is ocean from the bright it's beautiful so once I've got my pigments in I'm really making this quite rough I'm not really that bothered by it we need to create a layer for the inks to sit on now I'm using top and bottom from Orly you could use matte top coat but make sure it's a top coat that has an inhibition layer this one is a no cleanse top coat that doesn't work what you want to do is you want to have a top coat that's shiny but slightly porous. That way the ink will sit nicely on that top coat. Now, I would always recommend that you test the inks that you're gonna use on a paper towel just to make sure, because they, they look different in the bottles, um, just to make sure that you've got the right collection. And really we're just using a yellow from a chroma ink nails and a nice orangey red as well. We're gonna use the blue later, right at the very, very end. So all I've done is used a small brush. This is a brush I specifically use for inking. Um, and I've just dipped it in a palette which has that yellow on it. And then I've re-dipped into that dark red. You can see here I'm painting just like I would regular paint. Now, the reason why I'm painting this on is so that I've got a little bit of control. Now, if I wanted to do an abstract, I could just wish wash this all over the tip and it would be fine. And you can see already what it's doing. But I want to make sure that I create some kind of shape. Now, I've used a mixture here, not just of alcohol, but it's alcohol with uh, five drops of glycerin. Now, I would definitely just test this out um, and see how it works for you. I'm using 91% alcohol and I'm using just five drops in 500 mils of uh, alcohol, just sorry, five drops of vegetable glycerin. That just allows me to move the ink around without using the alcohol to bleach it. Once you put that alcohol down over the top of any of the colour, it instantly just bleaches it out. Whereas this works as a lubricant really, and it just makes everything softer and smooth things a lot easier. So there is a definite difference between using this mixture or using pure alcohol. So obviously I've got this little thing happening at the top. We're gonna to get rid of that later, but what we need to do is just get the colors down. And I don't want you to just go to town with this. Take your time and make sure that you're using the right amount of ink uh, as opposed to the right amount of blending fluid, depending on what you actually want. Now we are being quite controlled here because we want to create a fish shape. But if you really didn't really matter about that, then, you know, just let the ink do the work. And that's the key with this. We try and control our product that we're using. And the problem with that is that we don't let the product do its job. Now, if I wanted to paint a fish, I would use gel paint or regular paint, but I don't. I want ink to just allow it to be just sort of natural and smooth and 
wet and amazing. <laughs> so you can see I've added a little bit more of the orange and I'm just going over and layering. So now I'm cleaning up the underside of that fish and I'm literally just using a little bit of alcohol. I'm using 99.9% .9 alcohol on my brush right now and uh, I use that. You'll see later how I use that with the blue just to bleach out and uh, create bubbles. So that was fish one. Now we're going to do fish two. And you can see that I'm coming down. And just to show you, can you see how when that yellow went over the blue, it sort of looked green? Obviously, if you know your color theory, it will go green. But if I then add red, it will go brown. So make sure that when you're planning this out, and I probably should have planned this a little bit better, you don't put a heavy amount of blue where you plan to put the bulk of the fish. Now, for me, it worked okay, and I am happy with this, but hey, if you watched my nail art at night video um, the other day, it didn't work so well, hence why I'm doing it again. Um, so yeah, just make sure that when you're looking at things, you plan it out, when you're putting your background on there, the background is designed to help you. But what you will see is that I actually layer again and I create a semi foreground background. So really you could completely miss out the pigments. So my fish is pretty much done. We're going to add some details like eyes and whiskers. I know fish do have whiskers or certainly these koi carps do. Well, they're a sort of merging between goldfish and koi carps. I mean, you know, it's a fantasy fish. You know, it's a, a fish of my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> that's my excuse anyway so I'm literally again layering don't be afraid to let your ink dry and then come back in with the solution so that you can move things around a little bit more that's that's perfectly okay and sometimes when you do dry off your ink um, and let it dry actually you get a better result because the stain or the ink will sit um, whereas you think oh you know it's actually meant to move and you don't need it to move now remember this ink even if you wiped over with isopropyl alcohol or acetone it will have stained that top coat so don't you worry you're not really going to lose anything now what I'm doing here I'm now top coating this with a second layer of that top and bottom so I'm going to do another layer of inking now I'm going to be really liberal with that beautiful dark blue ink and I'm using the blending solution just to make it go around. So this is now giving me that second layer. I've got that blue in the background which has got a tiny little bit of shimmer. I don't think it really shows on the video. And then I've got this dark ink in the foreground so it looks like the fish is under the water. But what I do want to do is create a real ink effect. So I'm just using the blending solution to move it around. But then what I will do is I'll bleach out some of that blue. So if uh, I just move on a little bit, um, you'll see in a minute that I bleach it out. This just gives you a sense of depth to your design. You don't have to do this. If you were doing this on a client, probably wouldn't do it. Um, you've got to be a bit brave because once you've put this ink down, it pretty much stains that surface. So here is the isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 99.9%. .9%. You could use a 91% alcohol. It still would work. But can you see what happens? So the blending solution blended it. This moves it. This literally bleaches out spots and it just, you put it down, look at how it just blooms out and that's what we're looking for. Final layer. Now this is a no wipe top coat. This is actually from Mystic Nails called Joker Shine and it's fantastic. And what I'm doing with that is I'm saying, hey, this is it. This is a no wipe top coat. And so it's not porous, which means that nothing's going to affect that pigment layer underneath. Um, what I'm using now is a, a Legrand gel. This is a gel that also has no wipe, but it goes over anything. So it doesn't matter what surface you've got. And obviously this is a top coat surface. You can put this on. Once it's cured, it will go over everything. 
Now I'm just highlighting, I'm just adding a little bit of highlight and then what I'm going to do is create some 3D bubbles with this bubble gel. You can use this gel for gems as well and add gems to this if you wanted to. But these bubbles are just amazing and people will be going like, oh my god, wow. And it's so flat. I mean, they're not, although they are 3D, they don't really look um too bubbly and look at the look at the effect it creates it's so cool right so i hope you enjoyed my inking video i hope you enjoyed getting fishy with me and if you do create these little fishes please make sure you tag me on social because i would love to see your results